Let's pray together. Risen Lord Jesus, I pray, we pray for Easter joy this morning, a joy that is deeply rooted and enduring because it rests on the truth of your word. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat there. And uh, thank you. Uh, great to see everyone this morning. Well done for getting here an hour earlier. That's good. A few bags under the eyes, but, you know, working the foundation in hard. Um, we have, uh, this is an all-age talk, so uh, kids, you can uh, join in with this. Hopefully we'll have uh, some surprises along the way. But uh, I'm going to read, first of all, John's account of the resurrection. We're going to read his account. It's uh, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. And uh, then we'll pick out some of the details in there. So it'll come up on the screens. John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, so it's Sunday, still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, that's John, and said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, or folded up, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener. She said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right, I have 15 minutes this morning to convince you to fold your pyjamas. Okay? Here they are. This is a fresh pair, by the way, in case you're worried. I'm going to fold them there. I'm going to put them here as a little visual illustration. 15 minutes this morning to convince you that it is a Christian thing to do to, uh, with intent and fervor each morning from now on, all right? From now on, to fold your pajamas. Children, do you fold your pajamas? Youth? Do you fold your pajamas? I'm coming for you this morning. If you, if you cast, if you cast your pajamas, do you do that? If you're a stuffer, you like to stuff them in between the pillows. Do you do that? Or the worst ones, you just—they're in a heap. They're just heaped by the shower. There they are. And they, they stay there. They live there until the evening. So I'm coming for you. It is, I want, the end of this service, everyone to know, to wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to fold my pyjamas in a nice, perfect little rectilinear 
like little pile, like this. Fold your jimmies. Fold your jim jams. Fold your PJs. Because, because, John chapter 20, verse 7, this is what it says, this is what it says in one version. The linen, the cloths, the burial cloths that were there, and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head was not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up and in a place all by itself. Now that is a curious detail. Isn't that a strange detail? And the disciples, Peter and John, they went in there. They, were under, they had that little race, didn't they? They ran to the tomb. They both got in there and they noticed this. They noticed it. They noticed it so much so that John, who wrote the gospel, put it in there. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? And why might we notice it? And from this day forth, from henceforth, we shall fold <laughs> our pajamas every morning. Three reasons, okay? Three reasons, you ready? Children, extra Easter eggs if you can quote all three reasons at me after the service. Fold your pajamas as a declaration that Jesus has victory over death just as he said he would. He was raised from the dead on the first day, oh, sorry, on the third day, as he expected, as he taught, as he predicted over and over again. Here's three passages from Mark's gospel alone. Just Mark's gospel. You can join with me in the words highlighted in blue. Okay, ready? Here's the first one, Mark 8, 31. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and... After three days, rise again. Second time, this is now Mark 9.31. He said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and After three days. he will rise. Third one, Mark 10.33. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said. The Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death. And will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. He will rise. So Jesus said it. And so the day comes. The first Easter Sunday morning comes around and with perfect timing, he rose. He wasn't there in the tomb thinking, where am I? What am I doing here? How did this happen? What's going on? What am I supposed to do next? No, he's acting. He's doing something in that moment. He's making a point in that moment that God is in control, that he has the time and inclination to unwrap the grave clothes from around his body and lay them in the tomb because he knows he trusts his father, he always has. He knew, he knew then, he knows now, God can be trusted, will be faithful to his promises. And so, brothers and sisters, every morning, fold your pajamas so that you yourself can trust in the same promises that God makes to us. I won't let you down. I did it for my son, Jesus. I said I would raise him on the third day. I did it for him. I'll do it for you. So you fold your pajamas as a declaration of trust that God has got this. He won't let you down. Number two, fold your pajamas because Jesus has turned the horrors of death and grave into rest and a place of sleep. You guys know, don't you, what we say at a Christian funeral, we would say, won't we? What do we say? Rest in peace. That's what we say, R-I-P, rest in peace. Now you could, you could say that to someone before they go to bed. It might be a bit weird. <laughs> but you could. You could say, I hope you have a really restful night and it's very peaceful. Rest in peace. Like that. It might look at you a little bit odd, but you could say that. We, we go out there, out to that side of the church, we have a cemetery. Do you know that that word just means place of 
sleep like a dorm, dormitory, because Jesus has turned the horrors of death and grave into rest and sleep. Let me tell you about a story. Mark chapter 5, a guy called Jairus. A guy called Jairus, he comes to Jesus because his daughter's unwell. His 12-year-old daughter is sick. So he comes to Jesus and says, my daughter's unwell. Please come, lay your hands on her, make her well. So Jesus says, yes, of course, I'll come. He goes. He's going there. He's on his way there. And then the sad news comes from friends. Friends come. They meet them on the way. And they say, Jairus, your daughter has died. Don't don't bother the teacher anymore. She's died. Nevertheless, resolute, Jesus continues, implores them to have faith. And they reach the house, and he tells them, why all this commotion? Why all the bother? Why all the hysteria? She's not not dead. She's asleep. Now, she is dead, because they all laugh at Jesus when he says that. They know. They know what a dead body looks like. They know she's dead, and so they laugh at him. But nevertheless, Jesus goes into the room where she lay, and he does, listen to me here, Mark chapter 5, read it for yourself. It's a beautiful, beautiful beautiful story he does with this little 12 year old girl what you would do to someone who's sleeping he doesn't start you know doing CPR he goes and just grabs her hand and says get up and she gets up she sits up and the room is completely astonished everyone's amazed Now, back to the tomb. Back to Easter Sunday morning and the folded grave clothes. Maybe Jesus is making the same point again. This place, this place of chaos and darkness and death, I've transformed it. I have made it a place, we could call this rest. And I'm going to show you what it's like. Just like you might get up and on your own, take off your clothes, your grave clothes, your sleeping wear, whatever it might be. I'll just do that right here. Off it comes, folds it up, lays it down, separates it nice and neat, makes the point. The place of death and grave has become, for us, a place which we can think of as rest and sleep. So church family, boys, girls, fold your pajamas. And every morning, remember, death and the grave in this new world of the resurrected Jesus has become rest and a sleeping place. Number three, so we got those. Have confidence in God. He keeps his promises. He does that for Jesus, he's doing it for us. Number two, he's turned the place of grave death into rest and sleep. Number three, let's make it personal now. I can trust you. I'm going to fold my pajamas every day, every morning, as an expression of trust in you, Lord God, for my life and for my death. Let's see that. So there's this really curious detail about the tomb as Mary goes in this time. It's the second half of the story, so Peter and John have done their thing. Mary comes along, she walks in, and she notices. Do you remember what she saw two of? Two angels. Again, another detail in the story. One, if you imagine this was the sort of the place where Jesus lay, one at the head, the other at the foot. He makes that point explicitly. Why? Curious to our ears, but not so much to Jewish ears who have been reading this gospel, who would have read that gospel for the first time. Let me tell you why. In uh, the center of Jerusalem, in the middle of the city, there was a temple. And in the center of the temple, there was a most holy place. No one could go there. No one. No one except one person once a year, the great, the high priest. And in that place, there was something, there it is, called the Ark of the Covenant. A large, it's like a large box. And it was like a throne. Because at that part of the temple, it was symbolizing 
the presence of God, the rule of God. He would reign from there. That's where he would sit and rule and reign and have dominion from the center of the city, from the center of the temple. And on that box, on that ark of the covenant, you can see on the picture there, it's just a tiny little model of one, but can you see what's at the either end? Angels. Very specifically looking down, they're told they must sort of avert their gaze. You know, and their, their wings are sort of, sort of covering the onlooker from the glory and presence of the Lord. That's the idea. Remember the angels in heaven, they're crying out, holy, holy, holy. Like that here, the angels either side crying out, holy, the presence of God. That's what they would have known. And so isn't it curious? Think of the tomb now. We're in the tomb. We're in the grave. And then we've got this little scene. It's like a throne. Jesus reigns from there now. I reign. I own this place now. This belongs to me. I have dominion here. I rule from here. I've conquered it. It's a throne for me. I rule from this place. You know when, a, when an army, when maybe an ancient army captured a city or took a land, they might get into the land, get into the city, capture the city and place a flag or place a throne to say, we, we run this place now. This is ours now. They place a flag down, sit there, take up positions there. We run this joint now. Well, for Jesus, it wasn't a land and it wasn't a city. It was death itself, the grave, where he took up his throne and said, I reign from here. This is my dominion. And my presence is here now. And I rule over death and the grave. And so it is, brothers and sisters, that we can trust Jesus with our own life and our own death. No one else has done this. You know that, right? No one else has done it. No one else has even claimed to do it but Jesus of Nazareth. Everyone else who's claimed, even claimed, to come back from the dead has been written off in history. Except one. One stands alone. The Lord Jesus who reigns from the place of death. It's his now. It belongs to him. So you can entrust yourself, your life, your death to him. And I can tell you two ways you can do it. Number one, and you can start tomorrow morning, you can fold your pajamas. Every morning, that's where, you know, there was the angel there. There was the angel there, like a throne and there was the grave clothes. Death defeated. I reign from here now. So you could do that. Tomorrow morning, you could wake up. First of April, I'm going to fold my pajamas. Or alternatively, and you might like to consider this one, on the 19th of May, here in this church, we're going to be doing some baptisms. There'll be a baptistry out here. And for someone here, maybe for a few people here, who've never been baptized because you haven't taken that step, you haven't said, all right, I want to trust you, Jesus, with my own life and my own death. You can go in those waters on May 19th. It's just a few weeks away. And I would love to talk to you about that. And you can make that moment right there a declaration that I am going to trust you with my life and with my death. No one else has conquered that place. No one else has reigned and ruled from there but him. And we celebrate that this Easter morning. So would you fold your pajamas? Fold your gym jams. Fold your PJs every day. <laughs> And if you've never started doing that before and you want to start doing it now, be baptized. Be baptized May 19th right here.
We would love to talk to you about that. If you want to email, if you want to think about it, you want to email me, hello at stjohnsouthend.org. The email address is there. I would love to talk that through with anyone who would like to do that with me. Let's have a little prayer and then we'll close off with praise. Can I invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes? Let's pray to the God of glory together. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church and everyone here, especially with faith and hope. For a new day has dawned and the way to life stands open. May we glory in you, Lord Jesus. May we delight to fold our pajamas. And may we live in the freedom of new life today and always. Amen.